Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Slim Bits, where I will be talking about old cartoons that I've made. <laughs> uh, this one is on episode 15 of Kilroy called Hip Nuisance. Uh, this idea came about because um, I wanted to have more female villains for him to uh, go up against in the series. And, uh, you know, there's like a long-standing tradition of um, uh, supervillains with mind control powers, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, Kilgrave or Mastermind or uh, Dr. Psycho or anything like that, or characters like that. Um, and they just make for, like, good kind of comic booky superhero fodder. Um, but me, myself, I don't particularly believe in, like, the concepts of, like, mind control or... Uh, or, uh, you know, hypnosis, or, you know, ghosts for that matter, or psychics. I always just think they're kind of parlor tricks. So I just wanted to kind of have, like, my little, like, take on that, where uh, our villainess can't actually control people's minds. Um, she kind of get we kind of get around that in the story. Um, but, like, my character is just not convinced that she has the power to do this. You know, the, the villainess thinks that she does. Uh, I correctly assume that she doesn't, but uh, the, everyone kind of acts that she does. Um, and the reason they go along with this is because um, they feel sorry for her. She's kind of, um, uh, you know, she's, she's kind of, I guess she's like a younger villain that uh, Kilroy's gone up against. And uh, she's really trying and she works really hard on these like spiral goggles of hers and it's really important for her life of crime to really take off. So this was sort of my take on, I guess, you know, people aren't necessarily getting hypnotized they're getting guilt tripped into uh, into helping this lady, or they or they just feel, oh, she's she's bawling her eyes out. Oh, how am I gonna like, how am I gonna calm her down? You know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's really what uh, what's going on here with uh, this whole episode. Um, uh, well, I should probably just point out that um, uh, Hypnora, the, um, uh, the the villainous in question there, is voiced by a friend of mine, Sienna. Uh, who is like a actual like professional working actress and performer, um, and like for the most part in these um, uh, in these cartoons, with the exception of uh, obviously my friend Zach and uh, and Kaz, um, most of the people who I've got to voice these characters um, were just friends of mine who I knew could pull off these voices, um, but it's really hard to pull off convincing crying, especially when you're saying dialogue and. You know, like as ridiculous as my dialogue is. So I wanted to reach out to, you know, a professional, like someone who kind of knew what they were doing. And uh, thankfully, uh, Sienna, who like, you know, at the time, I believe she lived in Victoria. And so we had to do our session over Skype. Uh, she was absolutely game. And uh, I'm really happy how this uh, this episode turned out. And I'm sure uh, uh, eagle-eyed viewers noticed the uh, the marquee on the uh, the theater at the very start of the uh, the episode referenced a couple of, uh, well, I mean, it referenced uh, Gamer of Destiny, my other um, uh, cartoon series that I'm probably most well known for. <laughs> um, yeah, um, man, there was a plan that I, I wanted to do like a, a sequel to Gamer of Destiny. I still like am banging around ideas for it, but you know, unless I get like an assistant or another animator, I'm never gonna like buckle down and actually write and get the, uh, get the damn thing made. Um, and besides, like, that first movie was a huge ordeal, and, you know, I was in my mid-twenties when I did it, I'm in my early thirties now, I don't know if I could dedicate that long a time to doing a project to the same size of Gamer of Destiny again, uh, you know, unless I had an assistant, but, you know, that is not a call to arms or, uh, or a call to, like, donate to my Patreon or whatever, <laughs> I don't even have a goddamn Patreon, I'm too stuck in the mentality of like, oh, I'm never going to sell out, eh, doing this all for the love of the art kind of thing. <laughs> oh yeah, so there's me uh, just like calling her out on her parlor tricks, just like being a real stick in the mud about that sort of thing. Um, yeah, you know, like, one thing I will say about this episode is like, I think we've, like, this is not necessarily a, like a dig at anyone in particular, but I think we all at one point or other knew someone like this who would, you know, fall into hysterics and uh, just become, like, a, a blubbering mess. Um, and, you know, like, how do you handle that? Like, some people will, like, just choose to walk away from it. Other people, I certainly know I have, you know, kind of bent over backwards to accommodate these uh, these people in this time because, like, you just don't know what to do with uh, with someone who's in hysterics like that. 
So that's not necessarily a particular dig to anyone. I think it's just sort of a well-known uh, trope. <laughs> oh my god, the family jewelry. I never... I just remembered that. <laughs> oh, good on me for uh, that low-hanging fruit uh, kind of joke. <laughs> Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, this is one of the few cases where Kilroy uh, inadvertently uh, doesn't kill uh, their villain. Uh, of course, like a villain in this series has to end up dead. You know, that's what the whole premise of the, the series is. But uh, this is more or less a like, ah, let's give him another chance. And like, nah, 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 nah. We're, we're not going to do that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you for listening to uh, my uh, running commentary on this, uh, on this series. And uh, stay tuned for, uh, I guess, the next episode of these, whenever the hell it drops. Bye.